Hey guys, Brandon Mitchell here. So for the book report, I decided to read the book The Fold by Peter Kleins. Um, the book is basically about a man named Mike Erickson, who's a high school teacher, and he has what's called an eidetic memory, very similar to a photographic memory. He's basically able to just recount anything from his past in perfect detail. He describes this as both a curse and a blessing sometimes. Um, he's able to see some of the good things from his past, but then at the same time, he has to relive some of the bad things that have happened. So basically, to get to the story, Mike's approached by a friend of his who asks him to come down and work on a secret government project in New Mexico. So Mike flies down to New Mexico and learns a little bit more about what the project is. So the project's called the Albuquerque Door, and it's described to Mike in layman's terms as if you guys can imagine that this piece of paper is space-time, the long way to travel from point A to point B would be to travel the long way. Basically what the Albuquerque door is described to Mike as is having been able to bend space-time and connect the two points, making it much faster for him to go from one place to another. As the meeting progresses, Mike asks a little bit about the testing that they've done, and they say that they've done hand hundreds of animal tests um, where some of them have died, but they've done also a lot of human tests and luckily nobody has been affected by the human tests yet. Um, so the problem that they basically say is very similar to that in the story of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory where Mike TV is basically put into a million pieces, sent across another dimension and then put back together. Um, but as is described in that story as well, they often can't put the pieces back together once they've separated it. So after a few weeks of Mike being in Albuquerque, another one of the scientists named Bob, who had actually gone through a couple hundred times already, um, goes through again, and unfortunately he comes out in pretty bad shape. He's got jaundice, which is yellowing of the skin. He's missing a couple limbs. He's all bloody and battered. Um, and then he kind of collapses to the floor and dies. Um, after an incident like this, most people would probably think that they would shut down a program like that um, and that it would lose funding, and that's actually what Mike thought too. But Olaf, who is the lead scientist, decides to continue with human testing because he thinks that it's too valuable to not continue. Um, and the next person that goes through only a day or two later is Mike's love interest in the book, Jamie. So Jamie enters the door, comes out on the other side, everything is seemingly normal, and everybody's really relieved that it didn't end up being another situation like what happened to Bob. So later that night, Mike and Jamie go back to Jamie's trailer and Mike starts to undress Jamie and he notices that her back is perfectly normal, which is strange considering the fact that just a few days prior, Mike was told the story by Jamie about how when she was in high school, she and her boyfriend were in a really bad motorcycle accident, her boyfriend died, and she got really, really bad scarring on her back that sends her a lot of pain. So Mike kind of remarks on the fact that her back looks so good and Jamie not only acknowledges the fact that her back is normal but is really confused by what story Mike is even referring to um, when he brings up the motorcycle story that he was told. This gets Mike thinking that the technology that they're using probably isn't exactly what they think it is. Mike being the genius that he is uncovers the fact that the technology doesn't actually work like this piece of paper where it is within the same dimension bouncing you from one place to another but in reality, it works as multiple dimensions, and when you travel from one to another, you go in and it bounces the person that was filling your spot into the dimension you just came from, and you basically switch places. So in Jamie's case, in the universe that she came from when she went through the door, the motorcycle accident had never happened. And in Bob's case, he had obviously gone into a universe that was horrible, and out came the Bob that had been living in that horrible universe. While in Bob's case, it was obvious that something had gone wrong, Mike suggests that in most cases, the changes are so subtle that you wouldn't even notice, such as a change in clothes, a change in hair color, uh, facial hair, personality, something like that. At this point, the book sort of takes a 90 degree turn and sort of goes the sci-fi route and diverges from the technology and goes more into like aliens and stuff like that. But I won't bore you with that, so we'll just talk a little bit more about the technology that's behind it. So basically, the question that persists throughout the book is, is it still worth it to keep testing the technology to better understand it, even though human lives are at risk? So as was made clear by Olaf, who's the lead scientist on the project, yes. He chose to keep testing um, on Jamie, even after Bob had already just died that horrible death. Um, while in the moment, Mike felt as though this was a horrible decision, he too, at the end of the book, decides to pursue that understanding the technology better, so he's sort of in the same boat. 
I think it's also really important to break down the author and the publishing of the book to better understand it. Um, so when we look at the author, who's Peter Kleins, he's written a lot of books such as 14, Dead Moon, uh, Terminus, Ex-Heroes, Ex-Patriots, etc., which all sort of relate to kind of technology and sci-fi. With many of his books, this one being uh, a good example of it, uh, Kleins often hints at the concept that while technology is what drives us forward as a society, we often don't know enough about rising technologies um, and how they affect us down the road in order to keep testing. I also think it's really important to look at who published the book. Uh, it's Penguin Random House, which is a pretty big publishing company. Um, and the firm is sort of known for publishing a lot of books that challenge our reality and kind of propose fictional problems um, that make us kind of reflect on our own lives and how technologies like that would affect us. So with this book, it got me thinking about like, how would our world change if we had something similar to the Albuquerque door? But uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it.